I'd like to do a little video here that I hope will uh, inspire someone who is more tech savvy to take it a little further and maybe even create a YouTube channel devoted to the Facebook group St. Augustine Rocks. Um, I remember when the group first started and uh, I'll have to post credits in the comments below, but as some of you know, or may know, that I'm uh, pretty much confined to a wheelchair and can walk a few steps um, inside my house, but if I go out, I have to use a wheelchair, and when I'm at home, uh, sitting in the wheelchair at like a card table is very difficult for me, so I have a, basically a glorified lawn chair <laughs> with... Um, uh, what is this called? Bungee cord wrapped around the outside that takes the pressure off my uh, back and my legs because I have uh, polyneuropathy. So my legs are always feeling like they're asleep and always hurting and in pain. Um, some pins and needles mostly just sore like I've run a marathon and I haven't. But anyway, um, back to the subject at hand. Um, there's a Facebook group called St. Augustine Rocks, and I'll definitely put a link to it in the thing below, but, uh, description. But I wanted to, uh, talk about decorating, uh, rocks. Uh, a lot of people will use paints and different type of sealers and things like that, and just from right here in my chair, I'm going to talk about what I do and how I do it. Um, it's been wonderful. I've read some other people that while they're waiting uh, um, in a doctor's office, waiting and waiting and waiting to see their specialist, uh, they'll decorate rocks to make the time go by quick. Um, they are kind of heavy, so I have um, worked with clay a little bit. And once you bake the clay in the oven, um, you can decorate the clay, which is much lighter than... A rock or a stone. Um, a friend of mine came over, uh, Jeff Noel, who is has his own little company called Inspiration Art, and I'll leave a description or link or something down below to Jeff, but he brought me uh, this plastic bin with shells in it, and some shells, you know, you can decorate and do. Um, a lot of them, you know, look so similar and they're already decorated so neat, but sometimes you can put a little face on them or, of course, just leave them as is, which is beautiful. But sometimes people like to see just a little face with a tongue or something like that. Um, if, not, if nothing else, the inside of the shell, like the outside of the shell, is uh, so neat. It might have barnacles on it that kind of give you an idea for a face, like, you know, that looks like an eyeball. So you can run with it. But what I've found that is on the shell itself, you can use permanent markers. Uh, I use Sharpies, uh, fine point, and then regular Sharpies, like fatter ones. And the colors they have are amazing. I lost the focus. I don't know why it's not focusing. Oh, dear. I don't know what to do about that. Um, but I also use regular markers. Um, these are actually called Magic Fly, which are incredible and give me some vibrant colors. Uh, I'm jumping around a lot because I didn't rehearse or write a script for this. But anyway, with the shells, um, you can do some things on it, working with the patterns that are already there. Um, when you take a regular shell like this, it's great to put something on the outside. And like I said, you can almost see a creature right there but leave the shell as is and work on the inside a little bit and you go way up in there as far as you can um, and with paint it might be even better but I have a kitten and I have trouble sitting in a sitting position so I don't use paint too often uh, this rock here is a good example of the regular markers and the uh, Sharpie markers. Uh, I actually go there in my mind as I'm decorating these and doing little sand dunes and the walkways and little things. In my mind, I'm 
like actually there and it's very relaxing to me and I might do another video on little tips that I've found helpful but I'm no great artist or anything I just like doing things and I do what I can do I enjoy scenery and um, even on shells that or uh, barnacles or coral I found that you can take something like this and the other side is very smooth and you can do some really uh, nice little fine print. Now you can see how big that is by comparing it with my hand. Uh, it's very tiny, but I like to work with miniature stuff. I always have, even when I was a kid. And you can also do the outside of the shells. A lot of times I will do two sides because I uh, it, it takes takes, uh, you know, you get two for the price of one, I guess. Um, these shells, like this, uh, Jeff painted one, let's see if I can grab it here, uh, completely blue, which is really pretty, and he talked about making Christmas ornaments, and maybe even making a wreath, like some people have done, or even a Christmas tree out of shells, and uh, it's, it's pretty, but I have found that Unless you do just one solid coat or maybe just some eyes uh, on this kind of shell, it's so rough, it tears up the markers, um, and it doesn't really leave anything. But even looking at that, I can almost see some pine trees there. You know, like Christmas tree, but thin pine trees and the background. So your mind can kind of wander, but I found that with something this rough, especially, rather than try to do the outside, I do the inside. And, um, like I said, go way up in there as far as I can. And uh, just put it so that when someone sees the show, they pick it up, they look at it, and then they see something a little extra. I wrote a blog post, uh, I think I just called it Decorating Rocks or something, about my artwork, uh, this type of artwork. And one person was concerned about what paints do to the environment and um, how dangerous it could be and almost a how dare I do this kind of stuff. However, they did say that if it's for inside, um, that, you know, they're all for it and it's great. Shells are actually the exoskeleton of a creature that lived up inside there at one point or another, okay? So basically, you're decorating bones, and that's all that a shell is, that's all that's left behind is the exoskeleton. Some shells have grooves in them where other animals have tried to burrow through the thick shell in order to get to the creature that's living inside. But once that creature uh, is dead and gone, all that's left behind is their skeleton, and that's all that shells are. These shells are very common. I highly recommend you don't try to do anything on the outside of them because those ridges prevent you from doing much. Now, somebody may do a great job with that. I find it really hard. But again, the inside of these shells is very smooth. And markers, permanent markers, Sharpie or any other name brand, whatever, uh, can really uh, work well on them. I want to talk a little bit about sealer and stuff, but I'll just show you some of the things uh, Jeff asked me to do, and I think I've shown enough of the rocks to give an idea. Oh, a sand dollar. Sand dollar uh, already has a, some amazing um, designs on it. Um, Jeff gave me a couple sand dollars, and I might do some more with those. But they are already textured so much, and if you do any type of a paint or marker over it, the paint would probably take better to it, but it does leave a pattern, and the pattern actually, to me, looks kind of cool. So these are some things that I'm working on here. Jeff gave me one piece of coral that uh, I wasn't sure if you could do anything with it. I ended up putting this octopus kind of looking thing underwater, and a shark down below and I just use the different ridges you can see where that goes in there and that goes in there and then this goes in here 
and I used it uh, like layers. So the top one would be the land and the layers. Looks like it's gone blurry again on me. I don't know what to do about that. And then um, the sky, of course, and the land, and then under the land, the the water. Of course, I had to do both sides. So this side, I just did like a dark uh, shark or something. Um, I've got to look at pictures of sharks and dolphins so that I can tell the difference of them and the shape of their tail better. But you can see the shark and kind of his shadow down below, which I don't think I did a very good job, but it's good enough. And the, the indentations, you can't maybe see it unless I hold it this way. Um, same with both sides. They go in like that. So I just kind of look at it and uh, take a look at, at what I'm looking at. And as I'm looking at it, it develops into something. And that looked like a cliff up top. So I just kind of ran with it. I think that's um, what art is all about. And the more I relax, the more I'm able to do stuff with, with it. Of course, I watched a lot of Bob Ross and love Bob Ross and his oil paintings and um, kind of did some things while I was watching him. And he talked about the layering and getting the backgrounds and things like that. Uh, just recently, it's the first time I've ever tried this, but I did an alligator kind of in the water and just parts of the alligator sticking up. So that's fun. Um... I should have wrote down some main points of what I wanted to talk about, but one thing I do remember that I wanted to include was talking about sealing them with uh, polyurethane or Mod Podge. Um, here's a small bottle of Mod Podge here, very, very uh, popular. Uh, there's all kinds of clear coats that you can put on top of them. Uh, because I sit in this chair, uh, and kind of just reach over to, I've got everything I need right here in this little basket. And I reach over and grab a stone here, work on it on my lap, and then put the finished ones in a bucket or in something on this side. Putting a clear coat on it, you have to, uh, you know, get a, a cooking tray with tinfoil on it or uh, a desktop or something like that and paint them and let one side dry real well then flip them over and do it and I just can't seal them very good so if sealing uh, the the rocks or whatever you're decorating uh, is a concern of yours don't let, don't be overly concerned about it is what I found because I couldn't do it I just didn't do it in some cases and I I would just do it even with regular marker without permanent marker and I'd set it in the bathroom uh, on my on my sink and I'd wash my hands and some water would splash on them and sometimes um, the shower condensation and moisture in the air <clears throat> excuse me would you know uh, affect the rock a little bit however this rock right here is not only with a non-permanent marker the lizard itself is with uh, just a black felt pen. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have the pen right here. It was a nicer one uh, that was given to me. I think this is it. Let me make sure. Yeah, I tell by looking at the, the tip of it, a real fine felt blunt pen, you know, fiber cast, castle. And uh, it's just an artist's pen. I don't even know where I got it because I don't buy expensive things. My wife will splurge sometime. But we don't spend too much money on it. Um, and just a fine tip uh, felt pen is what I used for this lizard. Where did he go? He ran off. Now this lizard, uh, none of that is permanent marker. The green underneath it is... Um, just these, you know, green markers, not permanent ones, just green markers. And uh, the, f the outline of the lizard itself is just a regular felt pen. That's been sitting in my bathroom for months now. I don't even know how many months, but a long time. 
and the moisture in the air, let alone occasional splashing, has not really affected it. And even the word Florida is just written with a marker, a green marker, not a permanent marker, a green marker. Can you believe it? I waited there for people to laugh. Anyway, um, so without it being sealed, it's not sealed at all. It didn't, uh, it didn't run. Now, the other side was done with regular markers, and it's been in there for months, and the moisture did get to it. This was the part kind of against the wall. I put it uh, in the on the bathroom sink, like on the side, and the tile and the wall behind it, you can see it's getting all over my fingers, um, kind of got the best of it. But that's after several months, and you can still see the palm trees and the uh, seagull or pelican and the water it can easily be touched up and fixed. Um, but it shows you that without sealing it, you do have some effects um, if the moisture gets trapped. Because this was like, you know, in the corner up against the wall. But the side that was showing is fine. Um, this one here, yeah, you can see it pretty good. The clouds were just regular marker, and they were light purple, and they just got lighter. But they didn't, they didn't fade too bad. This side, I touched up a little bit. Um, and just kind of went over some things and made it made it clearer. I write St. Augustine Rocks and the little Facebook symbol or encourage people to post on St. Augustine Rocks because it's neat uh, when you when you get them out there and hide them to find out who found them. Um, and sometimes just doing a design and leaving it, uh, it's exciting to uh, watch from afar when people discover them or when you give them to somebody as a thank you. Uh, when we go on a cruise, I love giving them to people, um, you know, from other countries too. And I have little tiny, tiny googly eyes that are about the size of a pinhead um, that I can put on top of there. But again, in order to do that, I have to be able to sit up and uh, coat them with Mod Podge or something and then put the eyes on. Now this one was uh, just permanent marker. Actually, no. This one I can tell was paint and polyurethane. And that's been sitting in the bathroom and obviously nothing has happened to it. Um, Nancy... I want to say her last name is Branner or Bruner. I'm so sorry, Nancy, because I know you're watching this probably. But I don't always catch everybody's names. Um, I just know her as Nancy on uh, St. Augustine Rock's Facebook group. She uh, emailed me a list of little pieces of paper that say post pick on Facebook St. Augustine Rock's. And I put those on there and then painted it with either Mod Podge or polyurethane or any numerous sealers. There's sealers that you can spray uh, on and coat them and it will just help them last a lot longer than they would normally. But if you just can't seem to steal, seal them, steal them, then uh, don't, don't worry about it. Um, the important thing is that you're enjoying art and you're sharing it with other people. That's the way I look at it. Now, this is one that was actually outside. That was permanent marker and coated with several, several coats of polyurethane, which to me is the thickest. That's what you paint wooden floors with, you know, and uh, seal them and make them real shiny. This uh, was sitting out even in the Florida sun and in the elements and... It has held up for over a year now. Now the other side was, um, actually this side was on the ground. I have a little shell garden or rock garden out front. And it was just sitting with those rocks. And this was the side that was down against the ground or pavement or windowsill. This side was exposed to the sun and the elements. So even with the coat of polyurethane or whatever sealer, spray or you know Krylon I think it's called um, or even clear paint that you put on it this Florida Sun still gets the best of it and this one is a good example of 
this side was down toward the earth and um, some of the dirt has stuck, you know, to the polyurethane, I guess. And th that's where my f one friend commented that she was concerned about the environment. And I don't put them outside too often, but occasionally on the porch or on windowsills or out, uh, you know, on my front patio or something. Front patio. It's a, it's a two-foot square slab. But the other side that was um, that was exposed to the sun just said St. Augustine Rocks, and it was coated. And you can see where the coating was around the outside. So it obviously protects it when you paint them, but nothing lasts forever, obviously. Shout out to the band Panic Fire, good friend of mine, longtime friend since like 2000. Um has a band called Panic Fire. And uh, I did this little rock with him and his band in mind. Uh, and I put their post pick on Gary Shutt uh, and where you found it, you know, so that hopefully somebody will look at his social media and check it out. On the other side, I made it very clear, Gary Shutt rocks, and he's on YouTube and Facebook. And I'm hoping that once I put this out there, uh, somebody will pick it up. They'll kind of post a picture, and especially on Gary Shutt's site, uh, Facebook or YouTube or whatever, post a picture and let him know, hey, I found this. And that way Gary will know that I'm a fan and I'm thinking of him. And uh, I appreciate his multi-instrumental abilities. Uh, just tremendous, tremendous musician. So I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, I just hope that people will enjoy it no matter how they think it comes out. Because some of mine I do and I'm, I'm not extremely happy with them. Others I'm so pleased I want to post a picture and I'm like, oh, I got to share this with the world. So that's the idea behind Facebook and the groups. You could put anything on there, but I prefer to put St. Augustine Rocks and uh, encourage people to post the picture on on um, Facebook group St. Augustine Rocks so that we can see, uh, oh, they found this and this is where they found it. Uh, there's lots of other groups out there like um, the Florida Traveling Rock, um, Rock America, Love on the Rocks, um, just so many. And there's actually two St. Augustine groups the one that I prefer is St. Augustine, or ST, period, Augustine Rocks. Because there's another one, I think they kind of, same people started it, uh, and just didn't put the period after the saint, you know. So, sometimes I will go to both those sites, and I check the other sites occasionally. But they don't seem to have as much activity and people going on there. So, that's all I wanted to say for now. Uh, probably said too much, but what the heck. Um, maybe what I'll do is get up and, oh, another good idea is a uh, cigar box. Put the uh, shells or rocks in a cigar box. Shout out to Jeff Noel for doing the Beetle Bailey thing and painting a shell. He paint, hand painted that, man. You believe that? Beetle rocks. And uh, he did another one up here for me, sitting next to my uh, David. You know, David in the lion's den. Um, but he, he did this show, was so proud of it, and they dropped it, and it broke. And he was so saddened. Uh, shout out to my wife, who uh, takes me on cruises from time to time when we can, and um, buys my supplies for me, which is a big, big deal. I think what I'll do is I'll just grab this container here, and lay out a couple of these rocks uh, to just end the video with showing these. I would love to cue some music, but I don't know how to edit it. And that is my plea, too, that maybe somebody will do a St. Augustine Rocks uh, YouTube channel. That would be great. So uh, with the kitten here, I've got to be careful because she'll grab these real little tiny ones. Especially the lizards. I don't think she thinks they're real. But she will bat them around. Say hello, Elfie. Elfie Bailey.
there she is. So I'll just end by showing a couple of these. I think I've said all I've needed to say. Gotta watch her. See that? Gotta watch her. Now here's the basket, uh, little baggies, which is great to rinse them off and then set them outside. Uh, because of my limited mobility, it's hard for me to do some things. This is the chair. Pardon the pillows and whatnot, because a lot of times I will sleep on the floor still because of the pain. Um, and I <laughs> have all my stuff right here that I need, art supplies and notebooks and things that I'm reading. But this is the, the chair that I use, and I will just sit here, lean back, have a good light over my shoulder, and we'll reach down and grab a stone work on it in my chair, and then put it in the done pile over there. So here's a few that are done. Um, I like doing the frog, of course, and F-R-O-G, in case people don't know, to me that represents fully rely on God. I'd love to be able to just go up to somebody I see, it's having a hard day or something, plop this down and say this is for you, and on the back it says it. Love my lizards. Of course, the Facebook symbol, hopefully somebody who can find the lizard and post a picture of it. And then I try to put uh, St. Augustine Rocks or one of the many groups on there so that they'll know where to post the picture. And like I said, it's just neat to, um, it's neat to see the progress and where they're going and uh, what they're doing. I do occasional owls. I don't do all landscapes and lizards and frogs, but... Uh, occasionally we'll do other things, um, like the Gary Shutt thing, or, I don't know, something that somebody particularly likes. Um, but more often than not, I've been lately working on landscapes and trying to get the waves and the little sand dunes and things like that. The googly eyes, to me, just makes it, makes it a lot of fun. They're really tiny, the smallest googly eyes I've ever seen. This is actually the state of Florida, uh, minus the lady. I did some with the lady in it, but it was really difficult for me. But the state seal of Florida uh, looks very similar to that with the boat and the palm tree and the palms and stuff. Uh, I found that you can do, uh, you can do, um, I call them cattails, but different types of plants. Here they are here. Um, some people call them bobtails or cattails, where they, they come up and they've got a little brown corn dog looking thing on the end of them. Uh, but it, it makes for a, a neat little thing. And really, a lot of things that I draw, I've, I've seen. So I will, like the little flowers down there, little pink flowers, especially uh, right now in the spring, you're seeing those pop up. And. Um, Adding a little shadow to the lizards kind of make it, I don't know, just a little little neater, I think, maybe. Um, and sometimes just keeping it simpler is the best thing to do, which I'm not always good at. But just a simple black, uh, that's one of my favorites right there. The frog looks so good. And I love, uh, like I said, people from other countries or people visiting Florida to give them one of these uh, as a souvenir. And some of these are so tiny you could real easily put a magnet on the back so that it could, um, you know, stick on the refrigerator door. Stick it on the refrigerator door. Um, so, yeah, I just want to show a couple of these and hopefully in inspire people to do some stuff with it. I think a YouTube channel for St. Augustine Rocks or some type of a quote-unquote rock group would be great um, because there's a there's a big buzz right now. I don't know if it's been this way for a couple years now, but there's a big buzz on painting rocks and, and doing stuff like that. Um, but any kind of art, I, I would love to interview some of the people that, that do them um, and talk, talk to them about, you know, what inspires them. What inspires me is living here in Florida, uh, and I pretty much grew up in Florida, lived in Ohio for a little bit, 
outside of Cleveland, a little town called Strongsville. And I experienced the snow for about six years when I was a little boy. But I will tell you this, I really love Florida. And what I'm drawing uh, many times is stuff that I've seen. You know, we see these frogs, we see these lizards all the time on the back porch. This one's really tiny and light enough where it could be definitely be a magnet. This one, the eyeballs came off of it. So I don't know if I didn't seal it on there good enough or not, but it's very difficult for me to get the sealer on there. So I just don't do it sometimes. Pretty soon I'm going to be doing clouds that uh, kind of sweep and move because I love when the sky looks like God's just taking a big paintbrush and went whew, across the top of it. So, um, even if they're really tiny, you can you can do stuff. Most people might just throw that one away because it's, you know, basically the size of my thumb. But I look at it and say, hey, I can draw something real tiny on there. And I don't know if you can get the perspective out of how small some of them are, but um, they're really tiny. A lot of times it's just with a permanent marker, really fine tip, you just kind of do little dots and the birds are just, you know, like a the letter V. And I found if I work on the bird too much, I mess the bird up. Um, I just do a V and then like a little triangle toward the back of it and a little whoop toward the front of it. And it gives me the effect. And the little flowers, just little dots. Um, and not a lot of work, you know, put into it. You can definitely overwork things. Another shell. I should probably put that up there with Jeff's stuff and give that to him. Um, I don't like making long videos, so I apologize that this is going on and on and on. Some people might enjoy it, but it's more uh, to try to just encourage people uh, to somehow maybe post a little bit more, share what you're doing, and it would be great to have a YouTube channel uh, to answer questions. People that know how to do it much better than me and how they do it. I know there's a lot of art channels on YouTube that that I've watched and I, I learn from them. And specifically with decorating rocks, uh, it can be a whole lot of fun. I'm having trouble holding the camera sitting, right? But it can, um, it can also be a way of just feeling like you've accomplished something and because uh i'm handicapped now and i'm fairly new to being handicapped um six years ago today was my accident i've been through several several surgeries and uh, my legs just kept getting worse and then finally they said okay uh your nerves are messed up and we can't repair nerves so we'll have to you'll have to um, learn to live with it and I don't, uh, I just take some medication for the nerves, like gabapentin, uh, 